Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial today, I'm going to show you how you can turn one of these Dollar Tree um, crafter circle wood decor pieces that to me looks like a haunted house into a church. So we're going to be using a few um, fun Dollar Tree items like this it's a self-adhesive wall tile that's plastic but it's meant to look like the old tin ceilings um, so we're going to use that my little thing is all messed up we're going to use um, some of these craft sticks we're going to use some waverly chalk paint chalk acrylic paint that's uh, this color that i love so much called plaster um, we'll be using a little bit of wax, let's see, Waverly Wax, and then uh, I just grabbed a couple of kind of brown, grayish colored pieces of, uh, or little uh, pots of paint, let me get this fixed, and um, we're going to use a palette knife, some paper plate, some hot glue, and it's going to be really fun. Okay, so first thing is... You want to take the little tag off the top of your haunted house and then we're going to trim it a little bit so it's not so, I don't know what the right word is, but I'm going to first of all cut off these wings and just use a pair of scissors that are nice and sharp. Sometimes this wood is easy to cut and other times it's not. <laughs> okay, there's one. There's two. See, it already looks more like a church, right? Okay, then we're going to cut these little peaks right here off. And don't worry if they're not straight because it's going to be covered up. Okay, so it's definitely starting to look more like a church, um, although it does not look even. Oh well, um, I think I might slap this side a little bit more so it looks slightly, there we go, more even. Okay, so I just cut these pieces off. I'm gonna toss them, because there's no reason to keep them. And then we're gonna take our self-adhesive wild tile from Dollar Tree, uh, mine is, my store is a Dollar Tree Plus. This is in the dollar section. Well, happy anniversary, Jenny. She says she's celebrating her 44th anniversary today. I have an anniversary coming up in just a couple of days. Also, and I think mine, I have to ask my husband for sure, I think it's her uh, 28th. Anyways, okay, so this is what this looks like. And I just want to tell you right now, once you cut it up, it's not going to be adhesive anymore, so you'll have to use hot glue. So I'm going to just lay my soon-to-be-a-church on the top of my little faux, my self-adhesive tile. I'm going to use a Sharpie, and I'm just going to trace it. And this Sharpie will all get covered up, so don't worry about that either. You could probably use a regular pen if you wanted, but this just is easy to see. Okay. So here is our church. And now I'm just going to quickly cut it out. And I'm going to cut a little ways inside of my lines that I traced because when you're tracing it, it kind of makes you trace bigger 
than uh, your actual size. And we will we'll put it on and then we'll trim it one more time. So you could hang on to this if you wanted to do something with these pieces. Um, oops, it didn't go inside. You can see how easy this stuff is to cut. Um, and it's kind of cute the way it is right now, but it's way cuter when you paint it and distress it a little bit. And we're going to use a palette knife today to distress ours. You can also paint it or just stain it and um, use a cloth to wipe off the excess. Okay, here's our church. It looks more like a church, doesn't it? And this is the back. And it's only adhesive around the very edges. Okay? So, all right. Let's do the next step. You could put, cut a pumpkin out of that corner. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now I'm gonna glue it on and then we'll trim it one more time. Okay, and I'm using my low temperature hot glue gun, which I think is a good idea with this project because when you push it down into the glue, it, it does heat this plastic up a little bit and it does feel you know, kind of warm. So I'm just putting big globs on here to get it going. Most likely, I will mount this on something else. Like maybe I'll do something with this new $3 wood panel that I just picked up at Dollar Tree Plus. And I may do some kind of a background treatment on it and then put my church sort of off to the side with maybe a verse or something up here. Um, so all I'm, I'm telling you that just so that you know that you don't have to have this super glued down because it's not going to really get handled. Okay, so if I'm looking at the back, I can see that there's some areas that could use a little trimming. Is everyone doing today? Did you guys see my Dollar Tree video this morning? Oh my gosh, I got so many amazing things. And um, I'll show you what the surprise was at the end because it was so different. I got this little package. If you missed this video, go back and watch it. Of these little um, mushrooms. And they came in a couple different colors, but I love this color. Uh, I also got some of these awesome presses that have an LED or a, a Votavenom and ooh, a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this up quickly. You, you could honestly just leave whatever on there that pokes over the edge. It does not matter at all. Okay, so this looks a lot more like a church, don't you think? Okay, then the next step is going to be to take some Waverly. Uh, this is what I use, but you can use absolutely whatever kind of paint you might have on hand. This is sort of an ivory color. It's Waverly it says it's chalk paint, but it's really acrylic paint that probably has some chalk in it. 
it's a matte finish, no prep, and the color is plaster. So I just applied one coat, and this is what I have. Okay, this is the one we're going to continue on, but I wanted to show you all the steps up to there. I just put one coat of paint on there. Um, it could probably look a little better if you did too, but I don't think that's super important. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be um, making our roof and our windows. And I'm just using some of these craft sticks. These, I think, actually came from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use some of this Waverly wax. It's just a dark brown, but you can use whatever you have. You could also use brown paint. Um, you could water down some brown paint. Uh, it's just completely up to you. Okay, so I, we're just going to do three for right now, but you're going to need more than that. So you, and it'll be totally up to you how many pieces you want to put on your church. But all I'm going to do is paint wax, and I do want to, or yeah, paint this wax on here. And I am going to make sure that I get the edges because those may show. And I think that unfinished edges make a project look not as professional as it could be. I don't care about unfinished back. I frequently don't make the back of my projects very pretty if they're for me. But the edges of something like this roof, if they're not stained also, that's something that would bother me. Okay, so I just painted some uh, brown wax on my popsicle sticks. And now I'm basically just going to rub it off. And then I'm looking on the edges, and I'm going to just do the same thing. this Waverly dark brown wax is that it has no scent whatsoever or at least not to me so sometimes wax is really stinky but this doesn't seem to have that issue and then the other thing is at some point your little popsicle stick roofs may poke out a little bit so you want to, um, to finish just a little bit at the back of your popsicle stick. Thank you everyone for the um, stars. I see lots of you guys hopping on. I was just live this morning too. It's been one of those days where I had a lot of fun stuff that I wanted to show you. Um, and I have more fun stuff I want to show you, but I don't know that I can be ready to have another project later today. Okay, so then I have found that these are a little bit easier to cut if you do it while they're wet. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm cutting a slat for part of the roof. See um, how the end of that looks really unfinished? We will stay in that. We will also stay in the back so that if it pokes out a little bit, from the edge of the church, you really just need to do a corner. Um, you won't, you won't see it. You won't notice that it's a different color. Okay. So that's basically it. These are much easier to cut if you cut them while they are wet. All right. Then. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the fun treatment on our church, which started out as a haunted house, and, um, and then we're going to glue everything on, and I'm going to show you how to make windows and roofs and doors and all kinds of things. So what I used was Waverly Wax. You could use this also to do the... Um, the design, 
on the front of this, but I'm going to use some paint. Okay, and it, it's really personal preference what you want. I think I'm going to do a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit of mineral, which is kind of a taupey gray color. And I'm going to do a little bit of elephant, which is kind of a darker gray color. So I'm just putting some little blobs. If you're um, doing a palette knife painting, it really is, can I not get that lid on there? It is um, much easier and nicer to do if you have um, a paint that is thick. Okay, so I'm using a palette knife. Uh, let me show you a couple varieties of these. If you've never played with a palette knife before, it's really fun and you can do the most adorable edging. Okay, this set, and there was one other piece, is plastic and it came from Dollar Tree in the craft department. Here's a couple other palette knives that I think I purchased these in Canada, but I can't remember for sure, but they're metal. Honestly, I like the plastic the best. And this is my favorite one. So what you're gonna do is you're going to make sure that your paint is fully dry, and mine is, and then you're gonna hold your palette knife like this with your finger on this spot. And you're just gonna dip your palette knife in your paint and then offload a little bit. Can you see? So I just dipped it in my paint and then I offloaded a little bit. And then you're going to kind of run it over your surface and it's going to grab onto the bits of this design from this uh, wall um, of, of the silver. Where did I put the other one? This. It has raised a raised design. It's going to grab onto the bits that... Um, are raised. And so you can concentrate to get those all, those peaks all hit if you want or not. You can put this on as heavy as you want or not. I'll show you what this corner is looking like in just a second. my ring light here. We'll see if you can see a little better. It's kind of dark in Georgia today. And now we've got shadows, which I'm sorry about that. Lighting is hard. But can you see how it kind of gets on the raised part? So let's quickly do the rest of this design and then we'll come back over it with, um, with some of the darker color. Some of this is going to get covered up by our little roofs and our windows. What do you guys think so far? It really does uh, look to me like a distressed um, vintage tin roof. So I just keep dipping it and offloading a little bit. I've seen this also done with little bits of orange. If you were doing it on a pumpkin shape, for example. Um, I've also seen it with little bits, little flecks of green or sage green color. Um, and there are just a lot of different ways that you can do this, but it's really fun. I would like to, if I was actually artistic, I would love to know how to like paint a painting with a palette knife, but God gave me crafty, but he didn't really give me artistic. So. Okay. This 
is what this is looking like so far. Isn't it cool? Okay, I'm going to grab my heat gun. We're going to dry that before we move on to the next color because I don't just want it to all get mixed. I want the colors to be separate. doesn't take a super long time to dry. It's just in some areas, it's on kind of thick. So I'm going to say good. All right, let's give it another layer. Um, I'm just going to wipe out my palette knife. These plastic ones from Dollar Tree clean up so easy. And then we're going to use the other color we had, which is called Elephant. And it's one of these inexpensive little Waverly paints and I'm just putting my palette knife in here. I'm going to be very light-handed until I know how I feel about this. So I don't want to just cover all the areas that I've already done. I want to hit uh, some highlights. And a lot of this is going to get covered up. But if you don't, if you want to make some, you can use this exact same idea to make a pumpkin, a leaf, a house, you know, any shape you might want. And then you can go as heavy or as light as appeals to you using this. You can also apply it with, um, like a baby wipe, and then kind of wipe it off. So, and you can use all kinds of different colors, but what we're doing today is a church. Um, and I just wanted to show you what some things are that you could do and give you some ideas. Good. Okay, so this off of my spot right here. And then the next thing is to create. We're gonna sort of do it over the top of this one while this other thing here dries. Let me give it a quick shot. I'm 
going to do windows and doors using the popsicle sticks that we have stained. You could paint them also if you wanted. Okay, so I want a roof. Just imagine this. And I'll try to hold it up. I want to make a roof that's going to go over this lower part. And then I also want a roof that's going to go over the top. And then I want some arched windows and some doors in the center, okay? So um, the first thing you're going to do is just start figuring out how big you want your pieces to be and cut them. And then, did I put my brush away? I did. Dang, I need a little more of my, of my wax. A new brush. A new crummy brush. <laughs> okay, so where I cut it, see that would bother me how all the other edges are stained. So I'm going to do the back corner of that in case it shows a little bit and do the edge. Wipe it dry, and this could be the top. of a roof. And you can have it go down, extend down as far as you want, but remember how I was telling you to stain the back of it a little bit? It's because it could sort of appear a little bit, I suppose, uh, depending on what, what kind of project you were using it on. So, let me put those aside for just a minute. And before I came live, I was working on a bunch over here. So, we're going to have to remember what's for what. Um, and we'll start attaching them to our project. Okay, let's start with this lower roof. Okay, I think what I decided for this lower roof was uh, <laughs> that I didn't care if the center two pieces were going to overlap like this. See what I mean? I'm not going to abut those perfectly. Although I certainly could, but I'm afraid I won't get it right. Let's try. What the heck? How does this need to go? Oh. Do use a very sharp set of scissors to cut your wood pieces so that you don't accidentally end up cutting yourself. Okay, that's going to work just fine. All right, so let's glue this on. my very gunky and almost needs to be replaced Shervander, which is a cool shot. It's an inexpensive glue gun. Um, it's low temperature and I feel like it's maybe even a little bit lower than a regular low temperature hot glue gun. Okay. So you just kind of got to start. Get brave. And lay it down and start. There's one side. And I'm going to have glue strings all over the place, which drives me crazy. Now let's do the other side. It looks 
looks more like a church already and less like a scary haunted house. What do you guys think? Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. I think it's adorable. Okay, now let's do this upper roof. Let me remember which pieces I had for that. I think it was these right here. Yes, it was these right here. Sarah says it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This is my kind of thing because this is like creating something out of nothing. And that's, that's one of those things that I really love to do is try to make something basically out of popsicle sticks and hot glue. Um, yeah, I loved, I love these kind of projects. And somebody will say, what'd you make it with? And you're like, well, it started as a haunted house. <laughs> and then I glued on a um, self-adhesive wall tile that looks like this, in case you missed the beginning. And then we painted it. Then we did the palette knife. I just love creating something out of basically nothing. And it looks so much better already, don't you think? So you could leave it right here, but we're not going to. Okay, I want to do a set of windows on either side that have a, like two windows and that have a little round piece at the top. And then I'm just going to lay them down until we can get in place. And then I'm going to do uh, three pieces of wood for the big doors in the front of the church. And I just needed to decide how big to make, how tall to make those. So I clipped the end. The circle part off of these. Okay, and let's get some more of our wax and let's do the top and the bottom. Got something weird going on here. You would stain the whole bumps. Okay, I didn't quite understand that comment, but I'll come back. I always come back and read all of your comments, so I will come back and see what you guys are saying. So I'm going to stain the top of this. And I cut it straight. Well, I'm going to do the bottom too, so that it would look like big, heavy wood doors. Um, you could leave the bump on the top if you wanted, but if you're using three, that I think that would that might look funny. on. And if you watch other people who do crafts online, you may have seen something similar, but I bet you they didn't start with a haunted house wood cut out from Dollar Tree. That's just would be my guess. And that's what we started with here. It looks awesome, if I don't say so myself. It's really awesome. You could come back if you wanted and add something to these doors, but I think they're fabulous just like that. They're a little off center. Oops. Oh, well. 
This is for me, and I'm not super fussy. Okay, so let's do our windows. And I need to decide how high do I want them to be. I think I want them to be about the same height or just a little bit shorter than the big doors. windows on that side. You could also make a barn is what I'm looking at. Just take the, the peak off the top. Uh, that's, that would be cute too. There's so many things you can make with this idea. Okay, so let's put our other windows on the other side. Even though I got my, uh, I got my doors not quite in the center. Oopsie. You need a doorknob. Yeah, I was kind of thinking to do something on either side, but I'll have to, you know, I usually have to sit and stew on the final part of my projects and consider for a little bit before I decide what I want to do. I thought it would be sweet to do a, one more window here up at the very top. And of course you could do something right here but I think I, if I was going to do something, I would have it be around. And I'll have to look in my wood shapes. I don't think I have anything that would really work for that. But oh, I'm so happy with it. Okay, so what do you guys think? This started as a haunted house wood cutout from Dollar Tree. We snipped some of the edges off. We traced and cut out one of these self adhesive wall tiles. We painted, we used a palette knife and some paint to give it some, to make it look like a vintage ceiling tile. And um, then we used popsicle sticks that we stained to make the roof and the windows and the doors. And for the rest of it, what I would really like is for you guys to tell me in the comments what else should we do. And if I decided to put it on this, which is 9 by 14, what kind of a treatment would you like to see the background have? The other side needs to be stained to, be di to disappear. I am not sure what you're saying. Did I miss something? Oh, I could stain all of this. Yeah, I think. Oh, that's what she's saying. Yeah. So there's a few little touch-ups that I will need to do, but I love these wood panels from Dollar Tree, and I think maybe I'll figure this out overnight and come back to you tomorrow, and we can finish it up. But Dollar Tree has these great easels for three dollars uh, in the Dollar Tree Plus stores, and we could do something really fabulous with this. I think it's too big to go on the inside. 
Hmm. No, it could fit there as well. Which way should I do it? What do you guys think? Oh, I like it both ways. Crackle effect on the background. That's a great idea. Let me see what else you guys are saying. You could make it a candy shop. I love that idea. Um, maybe falling leaves for the background. That's a good idea. You know, I was toying with the idea of using, of doing a decoupage with a napkin because I'm in a napkin mood lately. And this is the one I have thought about, but it's not big enough. I don't think it's big enough. Well, it might work if we did this on the inside. Let me just fold it and see what you guys think. It might be way too busy. I don't know. Like I thought this project through to this point <laughs> and now I need some help. Do you guys like something like that or is that way too busy? Um, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's a little busy. You like the inside better. That looks very cute. What other ideas do you guys have? Okay, I'm, I'm reading, and it looks like the majority of you guys are liking this project better with it being on the inside of this wood panel rather than on the outside. That's what I'm interpreting right now, but I will I will make sure. Tell so tell me, let's call this the back and let's call this way the inside. Because then the other thing we could do is if we decided to decoupage a napkin background, do you guys like this one? Or is it too brown? All brown and beige. <laughs> this is me because this is what I would probably do uh, just by nature because I tend to always like things pretty neutral for my house. And I did use this same napkin. I'm going to show you another project. A week or so ago when we made this. So this was a flower we made. And we decoupaged that napkin onto a canvas banner. And it's, I did use, um, I used a special kind of decoupage for that. I used, or a special kind of Mod Podge. I used this Mod Podge that's for fabric to do this one. But um, tell me in the comments if you think I should use this one or should I look for something different or should I paint it or should I just stain the whole thing? Um, should I? do a treatment to the outside edge, like maybe stain it the same brown as we did the roof? And if so, should I do the parts of the easel that show? Lot of questions. Yeah. Hey, and thank you so much to everyone who did stars. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so tell me what you guys think. Um, several of you said that you think this napkin is too busy. And I don't know, I might sort of agree with that. But then, if I don't use that, I'm stumped. What, um, and it might fade a little bit when I take all the plies off of it and get it decoupaged to the surface. Um, and we could, do a treatment on the edge where we paint it with the plaster colored paint and then we use some of the darker colored paints to uh, distress it a little bit. You like the leaf napkin, which this, this one? I don't know where I got this. I may have purchased it or somebody may have sent it to me. So, well, I can't wait. A sky color, may, maybe for the background. 
Um, I can't wait to sit down and see what you guys have to say. So keep your comments coming. And, oh, I just heard an idea that I absolutely love to use an old hymnal page. I will have to go and grab some of my sheet music and see what would match because it, some of it's kind of yellowish and some of it's more crisp white and black, but that might be beautiful to put on there as well. And if I had a lot more room, I could possibly use one of these in the darker color that I showed you today from Dollar Tree. Or maybe something smaller. I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, do it this or this or say something to me in the comments um, to let me know that you are watching and, and what you thought and um, if you haven't already liked and followed this page, you may want to do that so you can see how we finish it up. Um, feel free to sprinkle. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to give me your suggestions. Seriously. Should I use the same uh, napkin as the background on this? What should I do? Okay, I'm going to sit down, count your responses, and um, I'll probably come back tomorrow and we'll finish this project up, and then we'll do something else. I think tomorrow we may be making some tea towels for my daughter-in-law that say, Hocus Pocus, I need coffee to focus. Um, and I might do something else for fallish for her. But I hope you'll come back again. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys later.